Could we be on the precipice of a new golden age of strategy games? Not tactics games or RPGs with strategic elements, but fully-fledged strategy landscapes, such as RTS, 4Xs and Grand Strategies. Hello, my name is GamerZack and I've been making these kind of list videos for a decade now, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC strategy games in 2023 and 2024 list that I make just for you. Every year we get an endless wave of new games. Most make strategic missteps, but enough soldiers can overcome any obstacle. So these days we undoubtedly get a few successes every year. Which of these 30 games will turn out good? No one ever guesses right. Statistically, one to three games will succeed. So if you fancy yourself a master strategist, Write down your prediction in a comment and come back in the future to see if you got it right. Don't forget all the bonus games at the end as well. Now, let's get started. Making the first move, it's Barkin by Glyph Worlds. Perhaps an RTS inspired by Dune because this takes place on a harsh sand planet where a brutal war happens between three factions, all vying for control of rare minerals. Oh, there are also sand snakes. So yeah, it's basically a Dune RTS that isn't officially Dune. Each faction has its own unique units and technologies, which can be difficult to balance, but I do personally think asymmetrical competition is really important to keep strategy games interesting and dynamic, as long as nothing is too overpowered. Overall, if you've played Dune 2000, this looks like a 3D version, so you can expect the staples of classic RTS being base building, resource management, and real-time army control. But will it end up feeling like a Dune knockoff, or will it actually be able to stand on its own? There's been a free demo in 2022, and the release date is currently set for the 9th of February, 2023. So Barkin's completion seems to be just over the next sand dune. Now, a game actually set on Arrakis. Dune Spice Wars by Shiro Games. A new strategy game set in the Dune universe sounds exciting, not to mention the other Dune games in the works. But this one isn't fully ready quite yet. At the start of Early Access, this game had its share of bugs and messiness, but overall gameplay had a solid foundation, and generally it feels like a good game. My main contention is that the Dune games have typically been super thick with their atmosphere. Dune as a franchise has. Watching back the original film, playing Dune 1, and remembering the live-action cinematics from Dune 2000 and Emperor Battle for Dune, the level of character, style, and atmosphere felt almost as intense as the sands of Arrakis. Here in Dune Spice Wars, it feels a bit clinical, lacking in personality, which doesn't make a huge difference in the gameplay, but it did make it harder to keep me compelled. I'm unsure if they'll be able to add in the signature Dune aesthetic as development continues, but if that's not a deal breaker for you, then Dune Spice Wars is looking like a good game at least. Now for another game that's being completely legally distinct, Tempest Rising by Slipgate Ironworks. Command and Conquer but not from EA? An enticing prospect for many. Ever since the CNC remasters, which are very good, but missing so many of the older games, I've been wanting a new game in the series, and I suspect I'm not the only one. Usually when a big series misses out on an opportunity, someone else steps up with something similar, but this really looks like a modern Command and Conquer, even to the point of having buildings shaped like hands. Classic RTS with base building, three asymmetrical factions with unique economies and units, two campaigns with cutscenes along with the good old game modes of skirmish, custom games, and ranked multiplayer with ELO matchmaking. Look, I mean, at a glance, this just seems awesome and it's a real chance that someone else will finally make a spiritual successor to Command & Conquer that might, might be able to 
match or hopefully surpass the older games. But maybe that's overly optimistic. Tempest Rising has all our hopes up. All we can do is hope it delivers. And then for another totally legally distinct not Command & Conquer, Dying Breed by Sarnea. This is clearly a Command & Conquer 95 almost clone, but it's got some zombie thing going on, which is kind of interesting. Retro futuristic RTS where a new substance has been discovered and is being put to military use. In 90s fashion, sneak behind enemy lines, navigate puzzling levels, construct bases, manage your resources and army, and defeat your enemies. Two campaigns for two factions vying for control, the Westworld Alliance and the Empire Ascending Order. It's a familiar setup with a fresh take which could be what a lot of people are wanting. As with the last game, it seems since EA isn't going to make a new Command & Conquer, then others are going to try to themselves. And if you're a fan of the original CNC, then this has some prospects. As long as this isn't directly ripping anything, it won't get in trouble, and there's a free demo to try if you want to check out Dying Breed. Okay, now we're a little bit into the video. I'm sure you're enjoying it so far. I've spent a lot of time on this, so if you do appreciate what you see here, please do press the like button. It's free and it helps a lot. I'd also love to know which game on the list is your favorite, so comment down below. It does actually help me look for more games that you will want to see. Alright, next game. It's Red Chaos by Square Cut Games. An indie modern RTS that also seems to be inspired by Command & Conquer. That means gathering resources, building bases and producing units are the core of the game. Campaign mode is available and multiplayer with up to 8 players offers the staple RTS options here. And there's the promise of sophisticated balancing, utilizing strengths and weaknesses of individual units. There is a story of a fractured empire and failed peace attempts, but I have to say the writing published so far is a bit messy. Early footage also looks kind of laggy and rough, and with so many other games on the list that are trying to take a piece of the CNC pie, it's going to be an uphill battle for this to control this ground. Planning to release mid-2023, we'll see if Red Chaos can fix itself up in time and carve out some territory for itself. In a similar vein, but very different, it's War Pause by Slipgate Ironworks and 2B Games. First glance of gameplay here, and you might think that this is just one more contemporary RTS. Building bases, collecting resources, training units, and overwhelming your enemy. Right? Well, this is actually about cats and dogs. Not in a metaphorical way, but literally. It's cats versus dogs. Inspired by the RTS game Z, a less known 90s endeavor, deploy spies, send in bazooka-wielding soldiers, and assemble an army of gunners, engineers, and pyros, which are actually cats or dogs. Gameplay does seem like a proper RTS, so my concern is the whole pet animal thing will just be a distraction and a surface level attempt to be unique. But then again, games have been feeling a bit clinical quite often these past few years, so maybe some silly fun choices is what we need. Something silly and fun could be refreshing, as long as the gameplay is also good. The animal RTS that is War Pause is currently set to release sometime in 2023, which is when we'll find out if this whole thing is a silly gimmick or if it turns out to be something actually meaningful. Flipping the script, we've got War Hospital by Brave Lamb Studio. A World War I RTS, but from a different perspective. You are the ray of hope in this war and are in control of the medical corps instead of soldiers. Build infrastructure and improve your hospital as you help maintain the strength of the front lines. Healing people isn't going to be so straightforward even considering the dangers of the war zone. Injuries can be from bullets, shells, chemical warfare and mental trauma and choices with little time and resources will force you to make difficult decisions. 
Not a traditional RTS, clearly, but I think it's a unique take and it kind of feels and looks like Company of Heroes. But your objectives are related to saving lives using innovative World War I medical technology on a realistic French front. Release is currently scheduled for quarter one in 2023, so not much longer until you can start saving lives in War Hospital. Staying on the front, we've got The Great War Western Front by Petroglyph Games. Play a deciding role in history on the iconic Western Front between the years 1914 to 1919. A dual commander grand strategy RTS set during World War I from the developers of Command and Conquer. It looks good and will have a campaign, historical scenarios, skirmish and multiplayer game modes. Play as either the Allied Nations or Central Powers, each with their unique abilities and gameplay styles. You control the big picture as a grand strategy, which is turn-based with resource management and technology research. But then you zoom in to control the battlefield in real time, where you build trenches and direct assaults. This sort of dual style gameplay has some merit and it could be the thing that sets this apart. Petroglyph Games has had its ups and downs, but we'll see if they can bring the RTS and Grand Strategy together while also keeping them separate. The Great War Western Front is aiming to release in 2023, so if you want to take charge, it shouldn't be much of a wait. Now, for a few games that are clearly inspired by They Are Billions, starting with Alien Marauder by Vexen Studio. A real-time strategy with survival and confrontation themes. This is kind of like a sci-fi They Are Billions, where you be a leader on a treacherous alien planet, build up your base and defenses, amass a large army and hold off massive swarms of alien creatures, hell-bent on destroying everything you've made. We do have a few games that are like this on this list, so the main challenge for these games is that They Are Billions is already a really good and popular game, and it's gonna take more than a theme and premise change to get people on board. It'll be interesting to see if Alien Marauder can do it. This went into early access towards the end of 2021 and has few reviews, but a mostly positive rating on Steam so far. Updates and additions through Early Access have been regular, if maybe a little slow, but Alien Marauder does seem to be getting new features over time, and it looks like it's coming together. No specific release window for completion though, it's just a loose roadmap. In a similar vein, but a bit more historical, Diplomacy is Not an Option by Door 407. Born as a feudal lord, and you were the nicest guy and everyone hates you for no reason. Hordes of enemies are ready to storm your castle, so prepare your defenses and hold off the masses trying to dethrone you. Definitely playing like a medieval they are billions, from what I've experienced, this feels a little looser and not quite as refined, but it does add a lot of twists to the gameplay. The spells and pretty much god powers do make quite a spectacle, and it makes wiping out the invading rabble pretty satisfying. It's also not set in a bleak post-apocalyptic zombie world, which does lighten the mood, which is something I do think many did struggle with, with how heavy They Are Billions is, gameplay and setting-wise. In early access since early 2022, with very positive reviews on Steam, Diplomacy is not an option is set for a 2023 full release. For one more wave survival RTS, Age of Darkness Final Stand by Playside. A dark, medieval, and magical game where you must illuminate, build, and defend humanity's last stand and survive against a horde of nightmares. Set in the remnants of an old kingdom consumed by a kind of living but deadly fog. You expand during the day and hunt the demons at night. Taking some inspiration from the roguelite genre, there are random malices and blessings that will change the experience in each run you do. Impressively, they also boast swarm tech 
that allows up to 70,000 units to exist on screen at any one time. That is something that these games are trying to push compared to they are billions. Just more units and more of everything. And, uh, and so far they've been having some success. This has been in early access since the end of 2021 and has received thousands of reviews on Steam with a very positive rating. But development is going a little slower than expected. Meant to be in early access for about one year, the roadmap still shows a lot of features are in development, including more content, a story campaign, and multiplayer. It's doing well and future plans sound great, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Age of Darkness Final Stand as it continues to develop through 2023. We had a touch of pixel art earlier, now for a few games that also bring the pixels. Starting with TFC The Fertile Crescent by Wield Interactive. An RTS inspired by the classics of old where you build and survive in the cradle of civilization. This does give off the vibe of being an Age of Empires pixel art demake with survival elements, and the gameplay is kind of like how some of us role-played playing Age of Empires as a survival colony builder back in the day. Or was that just me? Anyone else? No? Well, you know I love pixel art, so I'm into the way this looks, but it is very much a retro visual style, which I know many people struggle to get into. Overall though, the Fertile Crescent plays well, has competitive multiplayer, and does feel like a proper RTS. It's been getting updates and more is on the way, including new civilizations, naval combat, a campaign mode, and multiplayer matchmaking. With few but very positive reviews on Steam right now in early access, it's aiming for a full 2023 release. Staying old school, it's Retro Commander by Noble Master. A post-apocalyptic real-time strategy war game that seems to be inspired by Command and Conquer. Yes, another one. It's an influential series. Single and multiplayer modes, a good variety of units, and faction-specific technologies across five different factions. Gameplay seems good, but at the moment lacking refinement. Pixel art as a style has been more in vogue, as you can see, recently. And this is a decent look, though we have seen a variety of pixel styles even just here on this list, and I'm not sure if this one is going to be most people's favorite. It's an early access and free to play though, but with all maps and modding sold separately. And right now it's got few but mostly positive reviews on Steam. Planning to be an early access for up to a year, with the promise of better AI and more campaign missions, Retro Commander should be gearing up for a full release sometime in 2023. Staying pixels but going turn-based, we have Cantata by After School Studio. Now, I was sponsored to check out this game before, so I'll just keep this mostly factual. It's pixel art with a sci-fi and kind of a psychedelic aesthetic. Base building is a thing which might not be as expected in such a tactics looking game. And you'll be organizing your buildings to ensure you're getting the raw materials processed into parts needed to produce your units. There are multiple campaigns with various factions and the characters and story do feel original. Through early access, it's received few but positive reviews on Steam and has been getting updates to expand gameplay, adding a map generator, new campaigns, and multiplayer. Cantata is aiming for a 2023 full release, so you can check it out now or follow the updates to see when is best for you to jump in, if you like what you're seeing. Now for the final pixel art game, but it's a good one. Songs of Conquest by Lava Potion. Turn-based strategy with tactical battles and unique civilizations to choose from. This is clearly inspired by Heroes of Might and Magic, and it's what a lot of people have been looking for. Songs of Conquest is probably the best expression of pixel art for any upcoming game, and possibly the best pixel art in the strategy genre so far. Having covered it for a few years now, there's always a wave of comments who absolutely hate how this game looks, but I think its reception into early access speaks for itself, 
with a very positive rating on Steam. It's got some work to do though. The campaigns are incomplete, AI needs a work, the map maker is being improved on, multiplayer is still being developed, and various gameplay tweaks are needed to really bring it together and are on the roadmap. Besides that, it feels great to play in its current state. Songs of Conquest is planning for a 2023 full release, but could take a bit longer. But I'm personally excited to see its final composition. Next up we've got Myriad's Renaissance by Sleeping 8 Studio. Turn-based strategy with 4x and city building mechanics, set in a fantasy world with floating islands, grow your capital, expand your kingdom, and overcome a powerful enemy. The building of your island is where the city building comes in, managing your resources and limited space. Meanwhile, you'll need to explore a procedurally generated world made of an archipelago of floating islands. But the more you put yourself out there, the more attention you'll draw to yourself. As you defend and conquer, there's also a tech tree to research your way through, unlocking lost secrets that will make your buildings and units better. Free demos through 2022 are good to see, but there's no specific release window, and although there is a roadmap, proper updates are a little sparse. Hopefully things are still on track and we'll see Myriad's renaissance continue to develop into 2023. Next, it's Field of Glory Kingdoms by Agiod. Politics, religion, war, and legacy to stand the test of time. A grand strategy where you lead any nation you like and turn it into a mighty kingdom. Starting in the year 1054, the game takes place over two centuries across Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, while you manage authority and disorder, dynasties and characters, along with warfare that you can actually export into Field of Glory 2 Medieval, fight the battle, and then load the results back into this game, if you want to have specific control anyway. It's also promising one of the largest asynchronous multiplayer systems ever created, which sounds impressive at least. Overall, it seems like a huge game with a ton of things going on, though it will obviously compete with already successful games like Crusader Kings 3, which I think serve a large part of this market. Previous Field of Glory games have been reviewed well, though seem to have niche appeal. But if you're into the series, then Field of Glory Kingdoms should be an upgrade on what you already enjoy when this releases sometime in the future. For one we've been waiting for for a long time, Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign by Black Sea Games. This one was teased years ago and we've been waiting for it. Choose your kingdom and rule as you fight for control over medieval Europe in this real-time grand strategy. Manage provinces, gather armies, initiate diplomacy and dabble in espionage. This has been in the works for a few years now and it's not been smooth. Right up until the end of 2021, the official website and Steam page was still promising a 2021 release window. Now we're going into 2023. And since missing the old release window, it's now just labeled coming soon. I never like when estimated release windows get changed last minute or with vague explanations. But outside of that, the game visually and gameplay wise look great. And the dev diaries and updates have been regular, so the prospects for Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign are looking positive moving forward, if a little unsure. Now the one that people always ask about, Mana Lords by Slavic Magic. This is a game that has made a massive splash and has become a sensation in the strategy and city building scenes. People always ask for this in the city building list, but it really does straddle the line between the genres. It has large scale sieges and tactical battles while combining it with deep, organic and realistic city building with resource management. 
It visually looks amazing, and both building and military gameplay all seem to be coming together at a level of detail that is rare in gaming. This game is going all out, so much so that it's even mentioned motion capture, photogrammetry, and chaos physics to execute this level of visual detail and simulation. The main thing that I have to say is that Mana Lords better be good. Because what's been shown off has hyped a ton of people, and if a game made like this is a success, it's going to send a signal to publishers as well. No release window announced yet, so unfortunately, we all have to just wait for this one and hope it delivers. For a new one in an older series, Spellforce Conquest of Eo by Owned by Gravity. A new Spellforce game is on the way, a series that has been quite popular in the past, and this time you explore the lands of Eo in search of magical might. Beginning in a small and humble wizard's tower, defeat armies and heroes in turn-based tactical combat, find mighty artifacts, and raise knowledge and magic to become the most powerful mage of all. The game is also ever-changing, as you'll follow a procedurally generated campaign, which can keep replayability going, but the worry is it's a rarely as good as a handcrafted story. This does look great, and if everything shown off so far is actually representative of final gameplay, I can see this Spellforce game doing well for itself. I do generally like games that remind me of Age of Wonders, though. Release for now is just labeled coming soon, so it might be soon or in a year or two. But if you enjoyed the previous Spellforce games or other fantasy tactical 4Xs, then you'll probably want to keep an eye on Spellforce Conquest of Eo. Then we had a big hitter announcement called Ara History Untold by Oxide Games. Build a nation and lead your people throughout history to the pinnacles of human achievement as you explore new lands, develop arts and culture, conduct diplomacy, and go head to head with your rivals to prove that you are the greatest ruler ever known. A new competitor to civilization. As mentioned before, this is what happens when a series stumbles Others try to rise, to try and take the crown. Civilization VI has turned out successful, but it was also divisive on launch, and Civilization VII is feeling a little overdue. So we got Humankind, Old World, and now Ara History Untold. We haven't seen much of the latest contender, besides some screenshots and a trailer, but it will push Civilization VII to be better. So either way, we players should have better games and more options, which is only good. I'm just really looking forward to seeing if Ara History Untold will be able to innovate while staying grounded. Going a bit darker and sci-fi, it's Zephon by Proxy Studios. From the creators of Warhammer 40k Gladius, this is a 4X strategy game set in a post-apocalyptic world with what's promising to be a unique tactical combat system. You'll guide survivors through a grim dark future, navigate unexpected disasters, and face eldritch horrors along with cyberpunk monstrosities. Diplomacy, research, exploration, and city building. This is trying to provide all the 4X staples but with a twist. Which is hard to do, because things tend to become established because they work, so mixing things up to make them better is a challenge. We've only seen a few glimpses of the game in what's labeled pre-alpha, so it's hard to make any concrete judgments. But initial impressions look good. The planned release window is just 2023 for now, so we might see more of this soon, but at least over the next year, for Zephon. On a smaller scale, it's Empires of the Undergrowth by Slug Disco Studios. The ant-based strategy game with various types of ant species to choose from in competitive RTS gameplay. 
There's also a fleshed out campaign mode, which I think is important in any strategy game, especially in RTS, because the campaign is really what ties the setting and premise together. This is one game that we have watched for a long time. I don't like listing the same game year after year, but in 2022, the latest estimates are that Empires of the Undergrowth will actually be completing and releasing out of early access latest by mid-2023. So either way, this should be the last time we list this game. Because I don't want to list it again. It's a good game though, with thousands of reviews and a very positive rating on Steam. Being kind of a successor to Sim Ant, but really being more like Empire of the Ants, an old 3D colony ant sim thing. But this does have more competitive RTS elements. You can jump into the ant hill now or wait for the promised release of Empires of the Undergrowth that should be soon. Going a bit fantasy, it's Godsworn by Thunder Oak Interactive. Recently announced, uh, this is a classic mythological RTS with an epic and fantastical retelling of the Northern Crusades, where gods and their tribes clash against crusaders. Choose your divine hero, rally worshippers and mythological creatures, then smite the unworthy. Overall, this looks interesting, though visually a bit unpolished at the moment. Hero abilities, base building, and god powers make it sound like some RTSs of old. There's also a co-op campaign to embark on, and as far as I can tell, co-op RTS gameplay is very popular right now. Having an early access release sometime in 2023, it will be a year plus to completion, where more maps, missions, and heroes, and there's a lot of promise of refinement, particularly on the AI. So we'll see how development goes for Godsworn. Going from gods to the underworld, Agony Lords of Hell by Team Alpha. Build your empire on top of the bones of the Lords of Hell to become the absolute ruler of the underworld. Build your base, amass and arm followers, manage resources, spread your cult, conquer territories and cities, and cast spells. Said to be taking inspiration from Populous, it piques my interest because Populous the Beginning is one of my favorite RTSs of all time. But inspiration doesn't always equal execution. I can totally imagine controlling a demon instead of a shaman, in similar fashion. And that is an intriguing idea. Interestingly, Agony is a horror game that has mixed reviews on Steam and generally didn't impress all that much. Taking that universe and making an RTS, things might work out better in a different genre, but I'd still be cautious about taking command in Agony Lords of Hell. A new game to a big name, Minecraft Legends by Mojang Studios and Blackbird Interactive. A Minecraft strategy game, being developed by the same people making Homeworld. Alright, maybe it could work. Here you are tasked with defending the overworld from the invading destructive piglins, who are here to corrupt your familiar yet mysterious lush world. Control your hero, lead your armies, build defensive structures, and take the fight back to the piglins. This is more of an action strategy game, but there is a lot of interest in it. This is also notably a cross-platform game, including mobile, which could go a couple ways. Strategy games that are also on consoles and mobile can still be deep and complex, but often as a PC game, it can struggle to compare to other PC exclusive games. Having said that, Minecraft Legends will have more resources and backing than most other games out there. And personally, I've been seeing some PC games come to consoles and be able to maintain all the depth they had on PC, and even control pretty well with a controller. But will Minecraft Legends actually be able to pull it off? We'll just have to wait and see. 
Moving to space, it's Terra Invicta by Pavonis Interactive. An alien invasion has fractured humanity into factions. Lead one to take control of Earth and expand into the solar system, battling enemy fleets in tactical combat. Seven factions to choose from along with over 300 asteroids, moons, and planets to fight for, all in constant motion, meaning it's an ever-changing strategic map. You begin as a shadowy organization, playing geopolitics and researching technologies. Then you progress to launching into space to build bases and mine resources. This is kind of like a 4X grand strategy game with two distinct phases, and it doesn't seem to play too much like the other 4Xs set in space, so this might be just the right flavor for you. Mod support is also planned, which is always nice. Going into early access on the 26th of September in 2022, with the plan to take half a year or maybe longer to complete, Terra Invicta will show us what it truly is, and you can decide if this is a space you want to conquer. For a sequel that's been a long time coming, Sins of a Solar Empire 2 by Ironclad Games. Battle for dominance as one of three races in this real-time strategy set in space on a massive scale. Rule a vast space empire, command and battle fleets, and interact with a fully simulated universe where planets orbit stars and individual missiles are tracked. Notably, multiplayer can be over LAN or internet, which is a nice throwback slash change along with creation and modding tools being provided, so the community could expand the game further. The first game is pretty old, and this is a highly anticipated sequel that's just been announced. Will it live up to the hype? Well, we'll find out soon. Releasing onto the Epic Games Store for the start of Early Access on the 27th of October in 2022, you can have a proper look at Sins of a Solar Empire 2's gameplay first before jumping in early, or wait a year and see how it develops and if it then releases onto other stores, if that's what you prefer. Now a tumultuous one. Homeworld 3 by Blackbird Interactive. The sci-fi space RTS in 3D environments. This is the latest iteration of the classic strategy game. Now, this has some drama. From the moment Homeworld 3 was announced as a FIG crowdfunded project, but the goal was set to $1 because they already had Gearbox funding the whole thing, it just felt really weird to me. The point of crowdfunding is to get the community truly involved and kept in the loop of development. Having a publisher usually means you keep a lot of things under wraps to control marketing. How was this going to work? Turns out it doesn't. Communication of the progress of Homeworld 3 broke down and a lot of people are upset for a lot of different reasons. Unfulfilled promises to backers, lack of proper communication, and after years, we still haven't seen any proper gameplay. And everyone is wondering what's going on. Since the successful FIG campaign in September 2019, there have been a grand total of 25 updates on the FIG page. One recently being about the delay into 2023. I am curious about what Homeworld 3 is going to be after all of this. It might be good, but the biggest fans who supported it from the start might have a little bit of a bad aftertaste. Finally, for the last main entry in this list, but don't forget there's a whole bunch of bonus games after this one, so keep watching. Stormgate by Frost Giant Studios. So this is basically the next big RTS from X Blizzard devs. It's got massive funding, millions upon millions of dollars. Along with that, it's got a huge public following with endless discussions and community support. If there's ever been an RTS that has almost everything going for it, it's Stormgate. But there is one thing it doesn't have. Lineage. It's a completely new IP. No established story or lore, no fan favorite characters, no nostalgia attached to a decades-old series. That's where I think Stormgate 
will make or break itself, and it really needs to prove how it can truly compete with the overwhelming shadow being cast by StarCraft. One thing that's been made clear is that it's trying to take the most successful aspects of existing RTS games and accommodate a wide variety of players, even calling itself a social RTS, promising a focus on esports along with having an ever-expanding campaign. I am waiting with bated breath to see what Stormgate delivers and hoping that it really does become the next big RTS. But I guess we'll have to wait and see more when the beta hits in 2023. All right, now for a bunch of bonus games, but if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video and ring that bell as it really does help keep this channel running. Also, you can support more directly by using the GOG or Humble referral links to buy games or support directly on Patreon to really help push what I do further and to keep these lists being made on time. All linked down below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and my Twitter where I'm active and contactable. Now for those bonus games. Starting with Underfoot Queens. This is a free 4X strategy game by a solo dev that's about ant kingdoms and has a genetic system. You can try it out on Itch.io if you're curious. Dwarf RTS. An RTS like Command and & Conquer and StarCraft, but it's early days. Even the name is still a working title. Kevin Roos's The Foundation. A turn-based civilization-like strategy game in the setting of Kievan Rus. Developed by a small team of Ukrainians, it's early days right now, but it could turn out to be something over the next year or two. Elaborate Lands. A turn-based 4X strategy game with city-building elements that's in early development and not much has been shown off, but planning to go into early access. Mystical Conquests. It's an indie 4X turn-based fantasy strategy game. It's pretty indie looking, but gameplay seems solid. Planning to release in 2023, so we'll see how that goes. Immortal Gates of Pyre. A free-to-play battle strategy game where players act as godlike generals. This went into alpha testing in 2022, and it still looks pretty rough and incomplete. I'd be surprised if it fully released in 2023, so I'll check back with this one next year. Solium Infernum. It's kind of a grand strategy, but also a political simulator. You try to climb your way to become the new ruler of hell. It's an interesting premise. Warno. More of a purely tactical kind of game, but I think many would be asking about this since it's by Eugen Systems. It looks good, just doesn't quite fit into the curation of the main list here. And similarly, Headquarters World War II. It's another purely kind of tactical game set in World War II. Men of War II. One more real-time tactics game where you control units across a World War II battlefield. Fire and Maneuver. A kind of tactical tabletop war game with turn-based combat. It's meant to be free to play, but with paid for content. It looks interesting, but I'm not quite sure how it's all gonna turn out. Before anyone asks, The Settlers. I listed this properly in the city building list since people keep asking for it there, but it might turn out to be more of an RTS than anything, but I didn't want to list it twice because of how its development has been going. And who knows what it'll be on release, if it ever releases at all, considering its troubled developments and multiple delays. Fata Deum, a god game reminiscent of black and white. It had a demo in 2022 and was meant to release, but it felt unfinished and now it's been pushed back to 2023. But we'll see how this goes because it didn't perform all that well for me before. Global Conflagration, a modern base building RTS meant to release into early access and take up to two years or longer so it's not fully releasing anytime soon. Commanding Nations. Entering early access at the end of 2022, but looks really early in development, and it might be running a Kickstarter in the future, so it's unclear how it'll all go or when this will release. 
Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. It's a Terminator RTS that visually is really grey. But development has been put on hold for now. It might be revived, but there's no confirmation yet. Now, for a couple strategy games that we've watched for years, but I should mention them once again. BOC Birth of Cultures. I've listed this many times before. It's a 4X Civilization-esque strategy game, and it might be going into early access soon, and then over a year to release, but I'd guess a few years at least. And there's Module War, a genetic alien modular RTS where your base is your unit. You build parts and combine or split them at will. Super interesting, but we've listed it for years and it's only just about supposed to go into early access. It might release in a year or two, but we'll see. And then for strategy games that may be releasing in the near future, but maybe not yet either. Sanctuary Shattered Sun. It's a grand scale RTS with hundreds of units set on a fractured Dyson sphere. The Kickstarter is running, so we'll see how that goes. But from the progress I've seen, it's come a long way and performance is looking better. BAR, Beyond All Reason. This is another grand scale RTS, which is playable now, and it's kind of an ongoing development at this point. Stronghold Unreal. The next game in the Stronghold series is on the way. This will be the first time they're using the Unreal Engine and the first game after joining with Devolver Digital. We will be getting more news about this in 2023. There is supposed to be a Star Wars strategy game developed by Respawn. There's been a few Star Wars games going and a strategy one has been kind of announced but no title or anything specific yet. And of course, I'm gonna have to mention Civilization 7. Everyone is starting to feel like this is due, and Civ 6 was announced just some months before its full release. So it's likely Civ 7 will have a similar surprise announcement with a release soon after. It'll be interesting to see how it competes with Humankind, Old World, and of course most recently announced Ara. And that's 30 plus upcoming strategy games that should be releasing through 2023 and some into 2024, depending on their developments. Which ones are you most interested in? Also, here's something I'd like to know. Do you think we could ever have a new successful esports strategy game? StarCraft is waning, but nothing seems to be able to have any lasting impact. I'm still skeptical if Stormgate could even come close, but what do you think? Meanwhile, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, this is only one list of many, so drop by the other upcoming games list videos for so much more. The genres I covered this year are listed at the top of the screen. Take your pick, and I'll see you there. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.